about two weeks ago, I think it was, um, I got uh, IM'd. We take IMs every day, as you know. I got IM'd that a guy named Jackson Hinkle wanted to debate me. And so I, we have a, a fairly open door policy here. People can call in at any time. Uh, I suggested that he could call in, or if he wanted to debate me, he could email at majorityreporters at gmail.com or uh, uh, tweet at me. And within an hour after the show was over, that segment was clipped, uh, I think, by, by Jackson. And he wanted to, and he said to, to debate. And so we set it up. Um, and, uh, and since that time, uh, Bradley, put up that thing that you just gave me. Um, over that time, he has been very excited to debate. Those, those are, I think, from Twitter over the past uh, week. Yes, oh, please bring them on. Um, so I want to welcome to the program uh jackson hinkle do we have him yeah give me one second here let me start my camera okay and so uh jackson thank you for for coming on uh today uh i should say also you were very gracious because um where can i get him up here on the get him up on the screen um do we have him i've got a weird thing on my Stand. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, um, uh, you, you sent me an email with, with, with some dates and I've got some like, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little jammed up with my kids in the month of February. So I invited you onto the program. Uh, you were very gracious about, about coming on and I appreciate that. Um, and you wanted to, and now is it the case, Bradley, you can take that down. Um, you, I was told that you are a a communist, and so I don't know what you got going there. Um, and so uh, I was told that you are a communist, and that um, you wanted to come on, and you emailed me that you wanted to debate. You this is what you wrote: would love to focus the discussion around your support for the squad. I personally believe the squad and progressives in Congress are sellouts who have abandoned virtually every aspect. Of progressive principles over the last couple of years let me know if you'd be down to discuss this and i was a little uh, surprised are you all right can you see the yeah the thing just moved so i gotta fix it okay there you go all right so um so let me just so that you, my audience can can know who you are you've got a show called the dive right yes. yeah and are you and and and, and you are a communist yes I'm a Marxist, Leninist, anti-imperialist, and American patriot. Okay, all right, and because um, uh, I was, I have to say, I was a little bit surprised by what you wanted to talk about uh -huh. as, a, as a Marxist, Leninist, I guess, but um, because it seems a little bit, a little bit focused on electoral politics, from my experience with with folks who refer to themselves as communists but 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 if that's what you wanted to do that's fine with me so let's let's just start with the idea of the premise that the squad and progressives in congress presumably the democrats right um uh are sellouts what do you mean by that what i mean by that and why i think they're not progressive because that's the other big thing here is I think that there's three or four major issues I have with them. Number one being that they could have blocked the passage of a large number of must pass bills and they chose not to. And if they had chosen to block those, I think they could have, you know, leveraged their power for concessions, policy concessions. Uh, the second thing is I think that they have been directly voting for anti-progressive bills and measures. In some cases, they've even introduced these themselves. Um, they've acted at the behest of the Democratic establishment on multiple occasions, giving their own, you know, campaign funds to corporate Democrats. And the fourth thing or the third or fourth thing is basically staying silent and giving Joe Biden uh, support in the face of his pro-war anti-worker agenda. OK, 
So let me ask you this, because um, I'm trying to get at, I mean, I, 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 we'll get to those, the, the specific things, but, but when you say sellout, I mean, this is the, th- the part that I'm not, that, that I'm unclear on. Um, you, what do you think they've gotten from this? Like when you sell out something, right? I mean, you, you're, what are they getting? I think they're getting uh, preferential treatment from the Democratic establishment. I think the Democratic establishment is playing softball politics with them rather than going as hard as they could um, against the squad. I think the media has treated them relatively favorably ever since they have started to act in line and kind of toe the line of the Democratic establishment. Um, I mean, they've been able to receive uh, donations and connections with George Soros and George Soros's family uh, for not only their campaigns, but associated ventures like the Sunrise Movement. So I think those are just a few of the ways that they have uh, gotten preferential treatment from the Democratic establishment in what in what way? Because as far as I can tell, like, for instance, AOC, Katie Porter should not exactly uh, on the um, on the. uh, uh, in the squad, but I, but I imagine you include her in this group. Um, they got, they got actually the opposite of preferential treatments when it came to committee positions. Committees are the most important thing in terms of exercising power. They literally censured Ilhan Omar. Uh, they attempted to do it. I think, I think in some regards they have been attacked and there is going to be that friction there. In some ways, in some ways, Sam, in some ways, because you're, you're trying to act like there's no ways that they've been treated preferentially. Just tell me. I mean, they were invited, they were invited to, to, uh, you know, create dialogue with the Biden administration on a whole host of policies and different uh, policy arenas to influence the Biden agenda. They, they although I don't think they've really the done Biden that, uh, is, with the exception of maybe climate change. They've also, uh, I mean, Ilhan Omar, for example, was uh, she was made whip of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. We also have Ilhan Omar introducing bills that have already passed the House, thanks in part to, uh, you know, Nancy Pelosi's support. So there's a lot of ways in which they Wait, have so received just, preferential uh, treatment. But what I want to get at is what they have supported. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just let me just, d- d- you know, let's just have a dialogue here. You say they get preferential treatment. I'm trying to figure out what it is that they're selled out for. Like, what did they get paid in? And you said preferential treatment from the establishment. I listed things where they got the opposite. But you're telling me that Ilhan Omar, Ilhan Omar is named the whip of the congressional uh, uh, progressive caucus and they had the opportunity to negotiate with the Biden administration. That's the preferential treatment they got over other members of Congress. Well, I mean, the de facto position for progressives would be for the Democratic establishment to roast them at the stake every single opportunity they get because they're there to directly, supposedly challenge the Democratic establishment, replace them with people who align with, you know, whatever the squad is, the Justice Democrats were supposed to be. So, yes, I mean, that is the goal here. And it would uh, make sense that the Democratic establishment should be trying to go as hard as they can against them at every single chance they get. And they haven't done that. They've given them preferential treatment to what you would expect from a group of individuals who are supposed to be unseating them. So you're saying that uh, the Biden administration actually conceded on all of those things as opposed to I mean, I don't know what you mean by roasting. I don't think they conceded. I, and I don't want to focus too long on this because this isn't the crux of the argument. The crux of the argument, what I emailed you was about your support for the squad when I think that they are not progressive. OK, but yes, the Biden administration. I'm just trying to. But listen, listen, we're just going back and forth here. All right. You've made your, your your assessment that they're getting preferential treatment because they're not being roasted by the establishment. And then you're saying that they're getting money from George Soros. Yes. In, 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 in the form of giving it to the Sunrise Movement. No, Ilhan Omar received direct contributions. How much from from George Soros? She received, let me pull it up here. She received uh, between George Soros, Andrea Soros, and Alex Soros, she received $2,700, $5,600 in 2020, and then in 2018, $2,700 respectively. Okay. All right. I didn't realize she had received $2,700 in multiple years. Um, And so, 
So you're 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 contending that they sold out for over twenty seven hundred dollars from George Soros. No, if you listen to anything I just said, I I named numerous examples in which the squad has been given preferential treatment. And well, no, to I, just I, I, select I, I, that one in particular is very disingenuous. No, well, you said Soros. So I was just asking in terms of the Soros part. You said Soros was number four, I think. Uh, I mean, there's there's more I could go on to list. But again, Please. what I want to talk about here, what I want to talk about here and what you seem to not want to talk about, and I can assume why, is your continued support for the squad who is going along with the Democratic establishment on all these votes they could be blocking to get concessions in return. And in some cases, they're actually directly supporting anti-progressive measures and bills. Okay, and and I, 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 I uh, there is no doubt that they have taken votes that um, I agree that I would disagree with in, in some instances, some a instances. few or a lot. I mean, uh, a few. Um, how many I, is a few? I'm just curious. I don't have a list of how many votes. I don't appreciate that they've taken. Um, well, I mean, don't you think there's a? I'm, I, I just want to nail you down on this because don't you think there's a difference between like say a few is three, two to three. Don't you think there's a difference between two to three bad votes and say like oh, a 15 couple. or 20 bad votes? I, 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 how many votes did they take in total? And I'll tell you that I would imagine there's probably 25 to 30% of their votes that I would have a problem with off the top of my head. I would imagine for consequential policy items, there was probably roughly, there was probably roughly like, 60 to 100 consequential policy items that were voted on in this session of Congress 2021 so far. There's obviously a lot of procedural and House rules votes that get voted on every single uh, session of Congress. So far, there's been over 400 votes in this session of Congress, but a lot of those, again, are just on amendments to bills that are eventually voted on or just procedural votes. Okay. Uh, so you're saying that maybe 20 to 30 out of 60 are bad votes? 30%. I don't know. I mean, well, you just said 20 to 30 votes out of potentially 60 to 100 were bad. So is that something that you would necessarily support? I mean, I just don't really understand. Why don't you criticize the squad on all of these things? I've heard you criticize them like once and every so often, but you don't criticize them on I mean, all of these bad votes. And I don't understand how you plan to hold them accountable if you're not criticizing them. Well, I mean, I do. I mean, I don't know if you watch every one of our shows. Did you, you criticize them? Did you criticize them when AOC funneled one hundred and sixty thousand dollars to DCCC corporate Democrats after promising not to? Actually, actually first of all, she um, I actually didn't criticize that. Why not? Actually, because I'll tell you why, because I think part of the strategy in which they deployed and she said we should say that she did these in, in incremental ones, right? There was like two thousands a pop, if I if I'm not mistaken, right? Uh, they were five thousand. Okay, five thousand. Um, I think there's value in doing that because I think that what politicians should do, broadly speaking, is go in and try and get legislation that is positive passed. And so if 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 what positive legislation have they gotten passed by donating to those DCCC candidates? Well, they they uh, the Build Back Better bill passed in the House. Did it pass in the Senate? No, but she didn't give to senators. So what legislation has the squad voted for? Um, and it's also passed in the Senate that you think is good and directly a result of them donating five thousand oh, dollars to be triple C candidate. I mean, exactly, exactly. Don't you also think, wait, Sam, don't you also think that given that AOC, given given that AOC specifically said that she was not going to donate to them, that that's a problem that she then went out and donated to them. And this is before that. I think people could take issue with that. And this is before there's even a Democratic primary. So there was going to be progressive challengers like Ava Putsova in Arizona's first district. I listen, I think people could take issue with that. So why did you not? <laughs> we did talk about it. You just told me you didn't talk about it a minute ago. No, I guess told, you did. <laughs> I didn't spend as much time emphasizing it apparently as you want me to, but I've just no, made you just it. told me a minute ago you didn't talk about it. What do you think about uh, the fact that they voted to subsidize Cobra premiums for six months? I, in fact, um, talked about it with AOC. And I said that was garbage and she said it was garbage. So you talked about it before she did it or after she did it? After she did it, she came on the show 
And I literally said that was a garbage vote. And she said, yes, it's garbage. So did you press her as to why? I'm just curious. Yes. You should go back and watch it. What, what about what? when she voted to sanction uh, Myanmar, Cambodia and supported sanctions on Cuba, Venezuela, uh, a handful of other countries she voted to to sanction and basically the entire global south? Yeah, I'm against I'm against uh, sanctioning in particular in the particular the case of Venezuela. OK. Um, what about when she refused to speak out against Biden's airstrikes in Syria, Afghanistan, Somalia or Iraq, many of which killed civilians? I don't re- I don't remember. I don't remember if I said anything about AOC, not uh, you didn't. I was watching your show at the time. I actually watch a lot of your show, but usually to criticize you. What about when she voted to increase the Capitol Police and security budget uh, to one point nine billion dollar increase issue with her specifically? But I said that vote was wrong. So I don't really care. There's a, OK, Sam, Sam, there's one more thing I want to say here, because this kind of ties the whole argument together. There's a difference between saying that this vote is wrong and saying that not only is this vote wrong, but they could have leveraged the power that they had on these votes, because in the case of the Capitol Police and security bill, they could have actually blocked the passage of that bill to get concessions in return. So why are you not saying that? Because you've actually gone out on the record previously, previously, and you have said. Jackson, Jackson, let's have a debate here, okay? You're listing off every single time I haven't criticized AOC over the past. Well, the question is why? Well, I've made it quite clear. I don't care. You don't care about what? Let me ask you this. I don't care about what? No, 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 no. What don't you care about? What don't you care about? The increase in the Capitol Police, I don't think is that relevant. Why don't you think it's relevant? There was a there was a leak yesterday from Capitol Police that shows that Capitol Police has intelligence units across the country that are creating dossiers on Congress people and their staffers. You don't care about that? I think that's a problem that came out yesterday. Yes. The increase in the Capitol Police after they were overrun I, you know what? I just don't think it's that big of a deal. What I think is a much bigger deal in my mind was the opportunity to raise millions of children out of poverty, which they're not going to be able to do. But it, because, like you say, because they, they let it lapse. No, they didn't let it lapse. The child tax credit, they let that lapse. And they could have potentially not blocked that from lapsing credit, had they leveraged uh, their vote. Lapse. Had they leveraged their vote. What are you talking about? I'm what talking about talking? a number of votes. Do you, do you understand the idea? Do you understand the idea of force the vote? You Sam, understand? do you understand the idea of force the vote? No, I don't. But let me, let's just stay. What do you mean you don't me? understand the idea of force the vote? I'm Jackson. Do you think AOC is better than Joe Manchin? You yes, don't sir. understand the idea of force the vote? Do you think AOC is better than Joe Manchin? Let's stay with your original thing that you wanted to debate. Then we can get. Is to that play. what I wanted to debate? Did I email you about that? Would love to focus the discussion around your support for the squad. I personally believe the squad and progressives in Congress are sellouts who have abandoned virtually every aspect of progressive principles over the last couple of years. So where in that did I say that AOC is worse than Joe Manchin? I'm just curious. I'm asking you. I'm trying to explore if they have sold out every aspect of progressive principles and if you think joe manchin and aoc are uh, essentially the same again i did not say that you're you're creating that that's why i'm asking you you're creating a fake argument of course no i don't think aoc is the same i'm asking you a question well no you said that i said that and that's what i initially came to debate that's not true but no of course i don't think of course of course sam of course, I don't think that AOC is the same as Joe Manchin. Like, you think I'm insane or something? Of course, I don't think they're the same. I have some questions. So I have AOC, some questions about you, too. AOC is a better legislator, is more progressive than Joe Manchin. Um, I think she's a terrible legislator because she's allowed roughly 18 uh, must pass or near must pass votes go through without blocking them in instances in which she could have actually blocked the agenda from going through. Okay. Do you think AOC is more progressive than Joe Manchin? That's not what I came here to debate, but no, of course, I yes, I do. You why I support. That's not squad. what I came here to debate, but of course I do. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why I support the squad is because I think she's better than people like Joe Manchin. She, the squad. So 
think that my, my problem with that Elhan Omar and uh, Rashida Tlaib and are better than Josh Gottheimer. <laughs> so you're you're basically saying, well, AOC is better than the lowest bar we have in the Democratic Party. So that's why I support her. By that logic, do you support Nancy Pelosi because Nancy Pelosi is better than uh, Joe Manchin? I, you know what? I don't support Nancy Pelosi because oh, I really, but she's better than Joe Manchin. So why don't you support her? Because she's not the best that we have in the Congress. I think. Okay, so let, let's take a look at the best we have in the Congress. The best we have in the Congress, are, according to your logic, according to your logic, the best we have in the Congress right now is the squad, right? And the most progressive, I'm putting that in quotes, members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Yes, exactly. So given the fact that this group of individuals, the squad, campaigned on uh, fighting for a set agenda and they have not fought for that agenda and they have abandoned every single opportunity that they could have blocked must pass bills through or must pass votes like the speakership vote during the force the vote saga. They have chosen to pass the Democratic agenda instead of actually forcing through their agenda and getting small or large concessions in return. OK, so like, why didn't you support force the vote? Well, I'll, I'll talk to you about force the vote, but let's just stay on the topic that you wanted. And then I'll, then I'll talk about force the vote. Um, the reason why I support the most progressive members of the Democratic Party is because they're the most progressive uh, members of the Democratic Party. Now, if you want to have a conversation that you think people should be voting for a third party instead of Democrats, I'll have that conversation, too. But why wouldn't it, and unless you do want to have that conversation, why wouldn't I support the most progressive members of the Democratic Party, even if they are subpar to where I want them to be? I think that you need to hold them accountable, which is I was a supporter of AOC. I donated to her. I bought her little merchandise stuff. And even during I mean, force the vote, even during off. even during force the vote, even during force the vote, I would always say. I hope she proves me wrong. I hope she fights for this agenda that I care about. And she never did. And the squad never did. And they have chosen to vote for the party line every single time and not fight for their agenda. You feel scorned by them, but you still think they're the most progressive members of Congress, correct? That's not a high bar. I hold them to no, what I they say. No, no, Sam, Sam, bar. listen, don't inter I was about to they answer your question and you interrupted me. Have I was about to answer your question and you interrupted me. OK, I hold I hold them to the bar that they ran on while, you know, campaigning for Congress. That bar is saying stuff like I'm going to fight for Medicare for all. Um, we can't wait 100 more years. We need to fight for it right now. Saying stuff like I don't care if I'm a one term Congress person. AOC said this. I don't care if I'm a one term Congress person. I'm going to fight for my agenda or essentially go down trying. That's what I hold them to. OK, why don't why don't you? Um, I mean, I have issues with votes that they have taken at times. They are the most progressive members of the Democratic Party. And until there's more, more progressive people who are more progressive than them, they're the best we have. I don't get attached to politicians like you seem to have been felt like you're scorned by them in some way. And I just don't care. I don't think politicians have principles. I think they go in and they get the best that they can do. Sometimes I think that they make mistakes because they're not smart. Sometimes I think some of them are just completely sold out. I think there's a lot of sellouts in, in Congress. In fact, Ilhan Omar was on the program last week and she specifically said there's a lot of people who came in progressive who are corporatists now. And I don't I don't know who exactly she meant. I have some ideas. I suspect Nancy Pelosi was one of them. And 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 so I don't get attached in the way you do. So your notion of my support for them, I didn't donate to AOC. I didn't get as attached to them as you did. I take them. They are politicians. I look for the most progressive politicians who are in a position to either win or to implement policy. And yes, they have largely failed. Joe Biden has failed. The Senate has failed. The Senate leadership has failed. I think Pelosi failed. I think it was a mistake for them to vote for the bipartisan infrastructure bill. The Progressive Caucus has failed. 
In fact, I think that, you know, one of the things that I am hoping and, you know, to the extent that I can pressure, I mean, you know, there's only so much pressure I can bring to bear on politicians. But one of the things I am hoping that they do is that they actually implement some voting requirements, some litmus tests to be a progressive caucus member. I think that's a great idea. But my Sam, first of all, and I mean, you, know you just who, said a you know lot there. So up that idea, you know, who what? brought up that idea on this program? I have brought up that you've brought that up, that idea up on this program. I brought it up on my program as well. I know you've said that on this program. You you said it during uh, your first force the vote video. Actually, you said that maybe it's time that we uh, tell members of the CPC that they should have to support uh, a vote on Medicare for all on the House floor if they want to be a part of it. I think that's a great idea. I just wish you would continue holding them accountable like you did then. Anyways, but um you said that I'm too. How did I hold them accountable then? Sam, I just let you talk for so long. How did I hold them accountable then? You you want to you want to go into this, Jackson? What do you think is going on here? I you mean, held them accountable back then by uh, going out on your program and saying stuff like uh, honestly stuff like uh, is influencing this. them. We could push House progressive members to leverage their votes. It is worth it right now, tweeting at some of the top progressives, people who are supported by the Justice Democrats in the squad. Uh, the more of a stink we make, the easier it is for progressives to leverage it because they can simply say, look, I have my own pressures. So I think it's a good idea to do this, to force this vote. Yeah. So why did you not say that or make a stink about this during the vote on the adoption of House rules or the Congressional Budget, or the American Rescue Plan Act, or the For the People Act, or increasing the Capitol Police and Security Budget, or the 12% in increase in the State they Department. In USA no, I'm not done. 12% increase in the State Department and USAID funding that they all voted for. Um, the Legislative Appropriations Act, Combating International Islamophobia You're Act. Right. All of these things, all of these things, the Infrastructure Act, uh, increasing government funding, oh, all of these things, all of Sam, I'm done, but let me just finish. I let you talk for so long and I don't interrupt you. I just expect a little bit of respect in return. All of these things were passed by a margin of roughly uh, six to 10 votes in the house. These are all things that the progressives could have banded together or in some cases banded together I to stop and get concessions in return. Now, Jackson. Sam, please, please stop <laughs> interrupting me. No, 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 no. Stop interrupting Jackson, me. Jackson, you listed off a bunch of votes that you th you pre you presume I'm against. No I have a problem with the State Department getting more funding. No, no, you, you don't. You don't have a problem with that. With the State Department getting funding? No. A 12 percent increase. I, I mean, a 12 percent increase, 11 percent increase, 13 percent increase. You don't have, you don't have a, a problem with the State Department, who is, you know, leading coups across this world, who is launching hybrid warfare through uh, the National Endowment for Democracy and countries all across this world, like Venezuela, like you just mentioned that you said you had a problem with warmongering and sanctions on Venezuela. You don't have a problem with the 12 percent increase to the State Department when they could be con getting concessions for progressive policies in return. What concession? Any concession. Well, that, that, do you know how do you know how closely that State Department vote passed? Do you even know the vote? No, it was 217 to 212. AOC, Tlaib and Bush voted no. Uh, Presley, Omar, Boma, Bowman, Jayapal, Kana, Lee and Porter voted yes. So had three more progressives who voted yes, voted no. They would have been able to de defeat the measure temporarily or, you know, forever, because I don't support an increase in the State Department, unlike you. Okay. And they could have blocked it temporarily and gotten concessions in return. Increased uh, uh, on the State Department uh, budget. So why don't you think it was a good idea to at least temporary, temporarily delay the passage of that to I get concessions? What I had more of an issue with was the... No, no, wait, I want to hear you answer that. Authorization. Like, I don't care, Jackson. I don't care. I do not share your concern about the 12 percent increase in the penta in the state department budget i'm far no, more i'm not i'm not asking you to care about that i'm asking you to care about the fact that they could have delayed that they chose not to and by choosing not to they abandoned an opportunity to get a progressive concession in return why, did, why didn't you concession are you talking about any progressive concession you've listed What's things on? like getting better committee assignments Wait, wait, wait. So you think they're going to get a better uh, committee assignment if they hold up the vote on a State Department budget? 
That's what you've said in the past regarding the speakership vote. I think there's other progressive concessions they could have gotten in return. I think, uh, you know, they could have gotten votes on given policies. I think they could have gotten uh, Biden's agenda potentially to me. What? What about Sam? Sam, listen, what about a $15 minimum wage for all Americans? That's not even a progressive agenda item. That's something Biden ran on minimum wage. Yes. Not get through the Senate, Jackson. But don't you think it would be important to at the least get a vote on that in the House? I mean, I suppose. Uh, I mean, I, th- I think everybody has said they're for it. It's not going anywhere. So why don't you support the squad delaying these bills? All the ones I just listed that pass by a small margin of votes, smaller than the squad these themselves. Things are not terribly relevant in the final analysis. I mean, the, what, what are the problems with, let's say, force the vote? And you want to talk about that. And you've quoted me from a video in which I initially talked about force the vote. Do we have that video? Play that video. Play a clip of that video. And I'm going to I'm going to tell you like what what exactly what happened with force. You need to look at the video to remember what you said. It was a year ago, Jackson. I guess your opinions have shifted a lot since then. Well, I've also done 300 shows since then. All right. Here's the uh, here's uh, here's the video. Only my only caveat about this is that a. I don't know how well it's going to do in a vote. I think it's going to get the majority of Democrats, I would imagine, um, if it was to take the vote taken. But it's also like, is that the best ask? Mm -hmm. Is it better ask? uh, We want more progressives on this committee or we want more progressives on that committee. Um, But at the time, for the time being, and I, I need to read more into it. But I think the idea is that it is worth right now, I think. This is one of those few places like where Twitter actually means something. All right. So now, Jackson, let me tell you what happened after that. Can you hear me? My uh, my camera froze for some reason. You can hear me, though. Yeah, we can hear you. OK, um, so let me tell you what 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 happened at that point. Um. I was talking to some people and nobody in, 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 in a congressional thing, but but activists on this and people who are involved in uh, Medicare for all were like, it, it's going to be bad. We're going to lose 300 plus um, uh, to 100. It's going to be bad for Medicare for all. And, and I was like, well, I at this point, it's quite clear that the, the, the campaign for force the vote had already basically taken off. And at that point, did we just lose them? No, I'm still here. My camera just went out. I don't okay. know what happened. Is that on your end? Because I could actually see me in your camera. Yeah, no, it must be his. It's on my end. Anyways. All right. So and at that point, I realized like, OK, well, I'm not going to stay in the way of this thing because let a thousand flowers bloom was my feeling. It was a dumb ask uh, to have a vote. I'm now watching myself four times four. It was a dumb ask, in my opinion, to have a vote for something that was going to lose. Um, and I think that we definitely saw the um, the failure, even if it had won, I think it would, you know, and it wouldn't have gone anywhere in the, in the Senate. But, but for it to lose so badly would have been a dumb thing to do. And then all of a sudden it became this sort of litmus test. If, if the squad is not using this to do a dumb performative act, then they're sellouts. And that was the only time that I actually even started to speak out against the force of the vote. I'm not even sure if I did, you know, maybe, I think maybe we talked about it once um, at that point. Uh, yeah. And the next time I talked about it was on a, a show I was invited on, which at the time I was invited on was called, what was it, like bury the, or, or putting force the vote to bed, I think it was. By the time I ended that show, it was it had been a debate, but that was weeks after it had failed. So the reason why I didn't hold them to getting committee positions with that vote at that point was because the whole thing had taken off as Medicare for all and it become, you know, someone's sort of pet project to make it about some type of litmus test for the squad to push for Medicare for all, which I thought was a really bad idea. All right. All right. Well, you know, what's you know, what's interesting about that putting force the vote to bed debate you. I don't know if you still believe this, but 
one of the reasons you put forward for not supporting force the vote was you said, uh, let's say Nancy Pelosi says, fine, don't vote for me. Um, the Dems lose the speakership because you're not going to get that 218 people to coalesce around another person. You're going to end up getting McCarthy. Do you still believe the lie that uh, Kevin McCarthy would have become speaker of the house if we tried to force the vote? I have no idea what would have happened, to be totally honest with you, because there was no other candidate to run for Speaker of the House. But you do understand it would have taken Democrats voting for Kevin McCarthy or a large number of people abstaining from voting altogether rather than voting for someone else to end up with Kevin McCarthy as Speaker. Well, I don't know. Let's say they they held out. What happens on day two or three? You keep taking more rounds of voting. Do people abstain? No, you keep taking more. How do you know? Out. How do you know Josh Gottheimer doesn't abstain? How do you know? There's, Henry Cuellar, there's historical precedent. For how this. do you? Well, you know, there's historical precedent for what? Henry Cuellar? For a House speakership vote that went 12 rounds. Yeah. Well, how do you know that Josh Gottheimer is not going to abstain? How do you know that Henry Cuellar is not going to abstain? Because that would mean a Democrat is voting for a Republican. That's not going to happen. Have you seen Henry Cuellar's voting uh, uh, voting record? I have, and I've seen AOC's, which falls pretty much all in line with Nancy Pelosi's, too. Right. Well, Henry Cuellar's doesn't. The, the fact of the matter is they were not going to vote for a Republican. The Democratic establishment sure would not have allowed that? that to happen. And the fact that you're well, thinking that there's that some happen? sort of what? the fact that you're thinking that there's some sort of practicality in this argument that Henry Cuellar or Godheimer would have voted for uh, Kevin McCarthy as speaker is actually insane. Like, that's actually insane. OK. So if you understand, though, the principle behind force the vote and maybe you have problems with the Medicare. The ask. I had a vote, problem with the ask. Jesus Christ, it's not Sam, let me finish before I understand you interrupt me. Leverage. I know my camera is not on. It broke. But like, let me at least finish what I'm saying. OK, if you understand if you understand that force the vote is a strategy that could be carried out. And you've said this in the past. You just think maybe Medicare for all wasn't the best ask or the speakership vote was too risky because you don't understand how a speakership vote works. Then why didn't you support forcing the vote on any of the other policies I listed or criticize the squad for not uh, forcing the vote on those policies? OK, let's not use the word force the vote, because what do you want? What do you want to call it? Why didn't they use their leverage? I know that word, that phrase is triggering to you. So why didn't they use their leverage? Why didn't they use their leverage? Now, how do you know that they didn't? Because they voted for these bills without getting concessions in return. How do you know? Because there are no substantive large material changes that we have seen. Um, there's are nothing that the, what's in there's the, nothing. Uh, there's nothing that the squad wait, wait, has no, been no, wait a second. You just made a statement. You just asked me a question. Jackson. Let me finish. You no, just asked I me a heard question. You. Let you me finish. It. You said there's no. They you just asked me a question. Do you want me to finish answering or not? Do you know what's in the you don't Build want Back me to Better Bill? Answering. Do you know what's in the Build Back Better Bill? The one that didn't pass? Yeah, no, no. The one that did pass. It passed in the House. Was it signed into law? I must have missed that. But Jackson, we're talking about House members, yes? Well, what is the point of- Are we talking uh, about House members? Or are we Sam, talking about people Sam, in the Senate? What is the point? Are we talking about Joe Manchin? Or are we Sam, talking about AOC? Sam, you said that Joe Manchin is worse than AOC, that Sam, AOC is more progressive. They're different people. They're two different houses. You understand how that works. You want, you want to hear the incredible thing, Sam? You want to hear the- I understand that there are two Jackson. separate chambers in Congress, Sam. You want to hear the incredible Clip. thing? Hold on for one second, Jack. You to talk over. Jackson, you hold on ever let me answer the initial question you asked. I'll let, answer so in let me say this. Well, let me play the interesting this. thing here. Hold on one second, Jackson. Give me one second. Will you play the end of this, uh, the, the Ilhan Omar thing? Because I thought this was sort of interesting, because I think it's possible that Jackson doesn't quite understand certain dynamics. Bradley, do you have that? Play this last clip, because I tuned into this, or I, I got to be fair, somebody sent this to me. And I was curious, because Jackson had done a video on our interview with Ilhan Omar and said it was shocking. And I was like, was it? Did we do something that was shocking in the interview? But play the end of this, and this is what I think it was. Fights a little bit ways away, so we can uh, okay. we can hopefully catch. The, 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 the leadership fight's not going to happen, dude. What are you saying? You you honestly believe 
a lot of Omar's like, this motherfucker thinks that we're going to hold the house. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. You ask me those leadership position questions when the time comes around. Okay. All right. All right. All right. We'll see you later. Okay. Uh, that was incredible. Okay. So, Jackson, you understand there is going to be a leadership fight regardless of whether the Democrats hold the house. That there is a leadership fight if they are in the majority, then it's for the speakership. And if they're in the minority, then it's just for the leadership. In other words, Kevin McCarthy is the leader of the Republicans in the minority. You understand how this works, right? So first of all, I do want to address the fact that you just completely changed the subject when you were getting press. But yes, no, the I didn't change the subject. You don't think like you expect six members of the squad to change the votes in the Senate. And it doesn't work that way. When did I ever say that, Sam? Well, because I said you said what concessions did they get? And I said they passed the Build Back Better bill, which you didn't seem to understand in the House. And they did pass it in the House. And then you said, well, it wasn't signed into legislation. And I said, that's because it got stopped in the Senate. OK, and six okay. members so, of the House cannot control. I'm trying to be really, Senate. really respectful right now. But you continue don't to talk me. over me and don't interrupt me. me. Do so it let me go. Let me go. So. When you talk about speakership votes, that implies that there is going to be a Democratic majority. I, sp I spoke about second leadership of all, votes. Second of all, leadership second votes. Second of all, play it again. He didn't hear it. Second play of it all, again. play it again. Hold on, I'm going to mute you if you play it again. I'm trying to talk it's about. Me. It's my show, Ding Dong. Okay, play well, it again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off and say what I'm going to say about what I've been trying to get out for five minutes now. But you've continued well, you can do it again. But you just you just misspoke. You said I said speakership, and I said leadership. So let's play it you again. Think that the, it. Even even if Fights the end of that conversation, so the end of the conversation cannot, was about leadership and it was the, the, the do you think that's not going to happen, dude? What are you saying? You, you honestly believe <laughs> Elon Omar is like this motherfucker thinks that we're going to hold the house. Oh, my God. OK, I didn't say OK. That. Yeah, sure. You ask me those leadership position questions leadership. when the time comes around. OK, all, all right. right. All we're right. Done. All right. Okay. So. All right. So, Jackson, continue. You have to unmute yourself, Jackson. Is he still muted? <laughs> he may not come back. Ask him to unmute a few more times. Do yeah, you want to unmute? Might be, it might be the complex setup I just got going on there. He's got a pretty crazy setup going on. All I do is see myself twice. Did he go away? He's still on. He's still on, so... All right, well, Jackson... If you want to come back, you can come back. If not, we can say goodbye. Or we can keep him on if we want. Yeah, I'll just keep him in this side. Oh, am I still on his screen? Still on his screen? Yeah, you are. Okay. <laughs> Two number, uh, what's this one? Do this one. Oh. <laughs> Put that up. See if that gets him to come back. This is a um, this is the thing. Is sometimes I think Jackson's maybe not as necessarily as as uh, truthful. He says lies my parents told me when I was little. This is just from like a well, I guess it's from a year ago. Santa is real. The tooth fairy leaves money under your pillow. The United States military is fighting wars to defend our country. And then his dad responded. This is the only way that I knew him before this, this whole thing. I'm Santa. You never complained when you got the gifts. Yes, we were such assholes sneaking you money under your pillow. Never once did your mother and I tell you the military is fighting wars to defend our country. That's a bold-faced lie on your part. Did, did Jackson leave? Yeah, he's gone. He's gone. All right. That's too bad. Because I wanted to ask him about that. Because as a, as a parent... Uh, I want to know if there's actually tension between them or if that was funny. Because I feel like I would do that to my kids at one point. But all right, let's take a break and uh, we'll come back and uh, wrap up the show. And maybe Emma's just come back in so we can we can do this maybe show. I don't think he wants to come back. No, I, I think that. Well, I, I, I mean, I think we'll put it down to the technical um, confusion that he had going on there. Yeah, maybe it was difficult to unmute. Um, but yeah. I think we got all the points covered. I think so. 
We didn't get to the uh, squad is the um, spear point of fascism in the United States, but um, maybe I can. Do you want to give him that opportunity to say that we should allow? Let's play that. Yeah. Well, Which part? do we have the uh, squad is the fascism? Yep. It's not just that they're worse, that they're better than they're better than mansion, but they're also the the vanguard of fascism in this country. See, this is the thing that I think was like a little bit disingenuous. I feel like there's a little bit of Mott and Bailey, if people want to look that up, debating term, where you take a stronger position in one time than a more defensible position when you're being called on it. But here's, hmm. a, here's a little bit on the squad. Are Democrats the new fascists with their COVID concentration camps? I think that, uh, as I've said before, and I literally got, uh, it went semi-viral on Twitter when I said it, but I stand by it 100%. I said that... Uh, Fascism in the United States will come from progressive, like, woke circles like the squad, for example. I truly believe this is just further proof of that, you know? This is just further proof of that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh, I, yeah, I th So, it's not just that they didn't leverage their vote to get progressive con <laughs> concessions when there was a 12% increase in the State Department budget. It's that they're the vanguard of fascism in this country. I mean, my concern is that if what if we did force the vote and then all those squad members did vote for Medicare for all and then we supported them and then they did fascism on us. That would have been the real. Uh, they would have uh, had us right where we wanted us. But they're getting all these. Here's the amazing thing. On one hand, they're getting this preferential treatment where they're allowed to negotiate with Biden. But on the other hand, they're not leveraging their votes yeah now presumably they would leverage their votes to get negotiations with biden yeah well they got they get the opportunity to be ignored by joe biden but i don't understand how you're supposed to leverage to get something and that's different than getting preferential treatment from them hmm. i don't understand why he thought oh, yeah, himself help he's coming back oh Oh. Emma's back. Oh, I'm back. Yeah, sorry about. Oh, my mic was off. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. And your computer. And your camera. Why did he think muting himself would mute you? No, I muted him because he was talking over the clip. Oh. And uh, he wasn't able to uh, unmute, himself. unmute himself. Gotcha. Oh, you muted him. I thought he unmuted. Yeah, I thought he, was he muted over his clip. Hmm. Can he, does he have the link? He could come back in if yeah. he wants. Yeah, I mean, he's welcome to, if he can get it, maybe he can get his camera set up again, too. He can uh, go around, too. He's got the link, it's there for him if he wants it. I told him we had have an hour. He can come back on if he wants to. I think he might just rather complain about it, but we'll see. He's already got the, um, put up, put up those, those videos again. The, um, the, where's that thing of the. All the um, stuff, me, he, all the all the memes he's put on Twitter. Should I come back? I yes, just if go. he wants to rejoin, I don't want to be here in case. I don't know. He, I don't think he's. I don't. He I might don't, be. Look, he, he, I don't, he, want, I don't oh, want him to feel oh. ganged up on because he clearly has a lot of look, opinions about. I'm the looking show. at the chat. His uh, his his fans are very upset. Um, so I think uh, it's just it's just I, he can come back. I want to say, yeah, hey, tell him to come. He's back. He's got bro. the Zoom link. He right? clearly had some he's technical difficulties. So if yeah. if he wants to come back for round two, I think it's that's the that's the best thing for everybody just he, to clear up some of these questions. He can fix his camera. He can uh, he can sort it all out. We can right. uh, follow yeah. some of this stuff. Let's see. Let's read some of our IMs, shall we? World-class illustrator. I can't believe you scheduled an hour for this garbage. Well, I made, you know, I made a, you know, I, he was, he was nice about uh, understanding my... Oh, he's back. Okay. He's back? Okay, good. Cool. Death pulled from the future. Hinkle keeps complaining about AOC, but in the one example he gave, AOC voted the right way. Can the you math hear me? And I'll, I'll jump off so you guys yes. can be on mano y mano. Yes, we can hear Bro, like... First Where's of all, my your... camera's not working. Second of all, your host muted me. I don't know who that was, but your host yeah, muted talking me. Talking over the clip, it was me. Okay. Yeah, I, I tried to and, then, and then I never I never unmuted my thing. I never touched any of my stuff on my end. And then you guys claimed that I muted myself. You guys muted me and tried to get me off the stream. Matt just said it. No, no you're I, back. I just said I muted you because you're talking over we the clip. We do that and fairly why, why, 
why didn't you unmute me when it was over? And then you claimed that I muted myself. And Jackson, I was muted. Back. Jackson, you're talking to me. Let me just clarify. I asked you to unmute yourself. You'll notice in the chat, I said, are you able to unmute yourself? And you left. But now that everything's sorted out again, except your camera. Welcome. Oh, if you muted me, why didn't you just unmute me? I, I, I tried to. Jackson, I, 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 Jackson, Jackson, Zoom. Is you're let, back. Let, let me explain. Let me just explain for everybody because this I don't want this to be the thing that uh, they hang their hat on. Uh, it says, ask to the unmute yourself. So I asked you to unmute yourself. You had to affirmatively unmute yourself. You didn't do that. But Why now, didn't you just hey, say that? That's what I said actually right before you got on there. So. We have you a said it. You said it on a chat, but you didn't. I didn't. I'm not reading the chat. I mean, I didn't even know there was a chat in here. But all right, let's keep talking. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> So my question, Sam, was if you understand the idea behind forcing a vote on these sorts of policies and the squad ran on a set agenda saying they were going to fight for that agenda. And then every time they have the opportunity to force a vote on any number of these bills, they choose not to. And they have no material gains, no material concessions that they can show for these potentially hypothetical secret concessions that you claim they're getting potentially, uh, then why aren't you criticizing them like we all are? Okay, I don't know who we all are uh, in this instance, but, um, but Jackson, you started this off by saying that they were getting preferential treatment by the Democrats. And one of those was their ability to go in and negotiate with Biden. Now, how is that preferential treatment different from exercising their leverage to get in and negotiate as to what the outcomes of bills will be. Very, very easy answer to that. If you're looking at it from a practical sense as to what is practical, uh, pragmatic politics, the idea of going in on a uh, joint task force with Biden does not result in material changes. In addition to that, those, those joint task forces, with the exception of, say, the climate change one, they weren't negotiating based on their agenda and items that they could potentially get concessions on. They were negotiating in favor of Biden's agenda between the more progressive aspects of his agenda and the more conservative aspects of his agenda. And I think that they need to be forcing votes on their agenda, concessions for their forcing agenda. Forcing votes? What are you talking about? What does that mean, forcing votes? Well, I would ask you, because in your initial video and in the debate you had with Brianna Joy Gray, you said that, yes, I think forcing a vote is a fundamentally good principle. For getting leverage for certain things is a good principle. But I don't know what you mean, forcing a vote. You could have a vote. Listen, there's a bill that has been introduced by Jayapal, right? A Medicare for all bill. It was introduced after they had already voted for the subsidization of COBRA premiums for six months, which is something you said you vehemently disagreed with. I did disagree with it. Yes. I railed on it quite a bit, actually. You know, they actually delayed the introduction of Medicare for all so they could initially first pass the COBRA premium subsidies in that COVID yes. bill. Yes. Nancy Pelosi is a very outspoken critic of Medicare for all. I'm aware of that. That's why I've criticized Nancy Pelosi for that as well. So if you think that maybe Jayapal Medicare for all is no, not the best Let ask. Jayapal, do I think that putting a vote for Medicare for all on the floor is not the best ask? Correct. Okay, so why don't they instead, uh, you know, focus on, if you think maybe these domestic policies are not uh, their strong suit in forcing their agenda I through, do. like Medicare for all, why don't no. they focus on uh, foreign policy issues? No, no, no. Uh, no. Jackson. I, I, you, you, you're talking jibber jabber here. If you it's jibber jabber to vote, talk about foreign policy, vote, is that jibber jabber to you? Vote, if you force the vote for Medicare for all, let's say, it will lose. And not only will it not win, which you don't seem to think winning in the House is even meaningful, right? Because the Build Back Better is not going to become a bill because it's stopping in the Senate. What about losing a vote in the House? Um, you actually said you actually said on your show and, and let me bring this up because this is your quote again. You said that you think that uh, uh, it's important to set markers, even if votes fail. Uh, so when they can control, uh, you know, both houses and the White House, potentially with progressive politicians, 
they will have the record of who in the Democratic caucus votes for it. Yeah, well, with the, the value we have of Medicare for all is that we know at the very least there's a hundred Democrats who won't even co-sponsor the bill, right? And you so you know said that. now you, for instance, you said that you thought it was a good Senate, idea in the Senate. In the Senate, they voted to expand Social Security payments. Uh, I don't know, six years ago, five years ago, which I think was very helpful, even though it couldn't pass because it holds and binds those people. So, yes, I mean, I do think there's some some value to it, but it's but it's nominal. I wouldn't exercise. I wouldn't exercise, you know, the type of leverage you're talking about to get a vote, particularly on a bill where it's going to lose 300 to one to 100 or whatever, 310 to 110. Well, it's not even about that. It's about getting concessions that might not be necessarily policies. Like, for example, you have brought up this idea of getting committee assignments multiple times. So why are they not working to get better committee assignments for, I don't know, say the next uh, congressional cycle? I hope they are. Well, don't you think it's a bit of an issue? In fact, I would argue that maybe AOC sending money to uh, to moderate and, and even conservative Democrats was part of that. So you think that instead of leveraging their power, they should just be giving what them power? money? Dude, there's six votes. What power? Yeah. I just listed multiple votes that passed in the House with very slim margins, uh, such as the Capitol Police and, and they Security sink, Fund. If they sink those bills, what do you think they get? If they sink those bills, they could get the concessions you were just referring to. And you said no, that you think I maybe they got by giving way. money to DCCC Democrats. That's what you that just way. said. It doesn't work that way, Jackson. So you have to pay five thousand dollars to 32 different DCCC candidates to get anything done. I mean, it greases the wheels. Yeah, it greases the wheels. So what if I told you instead of playing softball politics and greasing the wheels, which what is, is all, di- all don't interrupt me. You've interrupted me so many what times, Sam. I don't You've care. Interrupted don't me cry so about many it. times throughout this entire debate. Listen, I don't care. You've interrupted me so many times. Care. I've let you talk. Now let I me talk. Care. What if I told you, you instead of greasing things that don't mean anything, softball Sam. politics, what does that mean? It what means softball it, politics. OK, mean? let me be specific. Let me be specific. Softball Please. politics is giving one hundred and sixty thousand dollars to DCCC Democrats when she said she was not going to do it. Please don't interrupt me. Hardball politics would be, say, blocking the State Department and USAID 12 percent funding increase or black blocking the uh, Capitol Police and Security funding increase. And what happens after you vote no on that? You vote no on it. And you block the bill from passing. And because these are things that the Democratic establishment really wants passed, you get concessions to vote for those policies. That's hardball politics. What are you talking about? What vote for what policies? Votes for. No, I said getting concessions. And when I say voting for policies, retaliate against her. No, I'm saying getting concessions to vote for the policies that they voted for without any concessions, like the increase in Capitol Police and security funding. So what the would State you do? Department what increase. would you change in that Capitol Police funding that you think that they should have changed in that bill? Well, I don't think that we should have given an increase to Capitol Police and security. But, you funding. Think but, they should but Sam, no Sam, again. Sam, here's here's the part you're missing. It's not about necessarily what they could change in that bill. It's about blocking that bill until they get a concession for something that substantively benefits the agenda they are fighting for. What is the something that you're talking about? You've listed numerous examples on your show because you said Medicare for all is not a good ask. So what if we did this, that or the other? There's a whole host of things. I'm not mean, a member of Congress, I, but I don't understand. I'm not a, not Sam, a, member, I'm of not a member of you Congress. You know how it works, Jackson, but you can't even articulate one thing that they're supposed to be asking for. $15 That's minimum how, wage. Okay. Better committee so assignments. Better say, committee assignments. I'm not going to vote. Committee assignments. Okay. The, very, but the committee assignments come out at the beginning of the year, and we'll find, about, uh, we'll find out about that. Don't you think that they would say when they're receiving all the criticism, in the we next vote should increase the well, capital police and security because we got this I'm in return. voting against. You want and my don't vote. You think you want that, my vote, Nancy Pelosi, for the State Department increase by 12 percent. And I'm going to withhold that vote unless we have a vote on Medicare for all and the hundred people who are against it vote for it. And you said that was a good idea at the time. I, Jackson, I'm asking you to I'm asking you. 
I'm asking you, do you still not believe it's a good idea? Because at the time yeah, you said no, it was a good I, idea. I, I very quickly said it wasn't a good idea. So very quickly what, after that video. So, so you said that uh, it was a good idea. You said then very quickly, I, ch I changed my mind and I thought it was a bad idea. Now you right. cited your reasoning for this because you said you thought it was a part of a Jimmy Dore effort to hate no, on the no, squad. No. No, That's no, what no. you said. I've no, seen it multiple said, times. No, 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 but the question is, you still support the fundamental strategy of forcing the vote, right? What are you talking about? Force the vote. No, I do not sell. But the, the, the idea of forcing a vote on something is stupid. Yeah, the problem was with force of vote. You you made all about shut, a vote shut up. Shut up. I'm debating Sam. So you don't think that hey, progressives. Hey, 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 don't you don't say think, shut up to him. You don't think that progressives. I want you to apologize. You don't think progressives should no, leverage their power. You just say that. I think, think progressives should leverage their power. Yes. Okay, so that's called forcing think, the vote. No, no, it's no. not. You just said one minute ago. Ago, that I don't want to use the phrase forced vote. I want to use Jackson, the phrase leverage their power. Up. You guys made that How are those up? different? <laughs> oh, my God. Because it's what you use your leverage for, Jackson. Okay? Look, I don't want to get into no, it. It's how, you, it's how you exert that leverage, Sam. A vote? So the substance doesn't matter? I, I, I don't understand. The substance of how, what strategy you employ to leverage your power. That's what matters. You think you're that instead of leveraging the their power, they should donate one hundred and sixty thousand dollars to the triple C Democrats. OK, I think contributing money to people gets them to vote your way. I think there are different things that you can do to build a coalition, to pass legislation, to materially benefit people. And what happens now, when you have that coalition? If what happens when you have know. a coalition? I don't know if you would have gotten those corporatists who wanted the, the salt reductions and et cetera, et cetera, to vote for Build Back Better or to, to sign off on a provision to, let's say, have expanded child care or whatever it is, had they not built those bridges. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know for sure. We're not privy to those conversations. You can say, I don't think it's a good strategy to... And I can tell you this, the reason why Steny Hoyer is the whip of the, of, the, of, the, of the caucus, of the Democratic caucus, is because Steny Hoyer gets all this corporate money that he doles out. He doesn't okay. have to do much fundraising for himself. We're not talking about around the country. He goes around the country and he, he builds support for things by We're donating money Hoyer. to different congressional candidates. And so... Is there value for the number one fundraiser who happens to be a progressive to wield that same type of power? My answer is yes, definitively. So I point that, to you exactly. That's very interesting. That power pays that's off. That's very interesting. No, I cannot. That's very interesting because earlier on in this debate, you quite literally said I had a problem. Everyone heard the debate, Jackson. It'll be on video. You don't have to you keep said, I had a problem. <laughs> you don't want to talk about this. You said I had a problem with AOC donating one hundred and sixty thousand dollars to DCCC Democrats when she said that she wasn't going to. So my question is, you just I said a moment I ago. I had that problem, you Jackson. Said, you just I said a it. moment ago. You no, just he said, said a moment ago did. that the squad. I have a problem. Whatever. You whatever. just That's said a moment ago that people can look at the video, Jackson. What okay, I would love to. You just said a moment ago that there is the potential for factions to form in Congress and those factions can leverage their power. Did you not? Uh, I, I don't know if I said that, but I agree with that statement. OK, so. If you think that that is possible and if the explicit goal of the Justice Democrats was to do just that. And if the reality of this session of Congress is they could have blocked certain votes that were, in my opinion, bad, maybe in your opinion, I don't know what you think about those votes, but they could have blocked those votes to get concessions in return. They haven't done that. Don't you think that that is a failure of their strategy? In general, no. I think that if they got, I mean, no, because you're, you're, not, you're not giving me a specific <laughs> instance, and I don't, there, there are votes that they may uh, be for or against. I don't know. So I Sam, you, there are votes I actually, I actually respect you more. I actually respect you more after this debate than I initially did coming into the debate because wow. you said on multiple occasions, like when I brought up, when I brought up the sanctions, He's up. <laughs> when I brought, when I brought up the sanctions, when I brought up uh, 
you know, other issues that I had, you know, disagreements with them on, with the exception of the State Department and Capitol Police funding, you actually said that those were bad things, that you disagreed with what they did. And in some cases, but not all, you criticize them. But what you still fail to recognize is that the explicit strategy that the Justice Democrats ran on, which was to create those factions and essentially be a thorn in the side of the Democratic establishment, kind of in a way you know in what? which uh, the, the, Tea Party, Democrats the Tea Party said explicitly that uh, our job how many times to are you be gonna interrupt me? You're interrupting me as many Disney. times as you said Jimmy Dore during the Brianna Joy Gray debate. I wasn't okay. done. So they were to be a thorn care. in the side I of the Democratic care. establishment. I, you and know what? They have to not done that. On being a thorn in the side of the Democratic establishment is literally for children. Or the People's Party. Go, go win some races. Like, I don't, I don't, like, I want material benefits for people. And if that means that they stroke the Democratic establishment or they are thorn in it, I don't care about that. That's for children. That's it's what not children. for children. It's no, not I for children. I don't care about the establishment. Sam, Sam. Mommy, daddy, this. Who Sam, cares? By, by not being a thorn in the side of the establishment, by not being a thorn in the side of the establishment, they actually hurt themselves. Because by, by donating, yes, they did. By donating to the DCCC candidates who were going to be challenged by progressive primary candidates, they have essentially ruled out the really? odds of those progressive primary candidates challenging the DCCC candidates in this which, next which election cycle. Candidates? What? Which progressive candidates were running against those? Ava Putsova is the one that comes to mind. Arizona's first district. She was going to run against one, one of these DCCC uh, candidates. That Who was supports. the candidate that, that uh, AOC gave to that Ava Petrova was going to run against? What's that? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Who's the candidate that AOC gave money to that Ava Petrova was going to run against? And what was Ava Petrova's chance of winning? The candidate that she gave money to was... Uh, Whoever represents the first district, it's uh, Tom O'Halloran. He's a corporate Democrat. Uh, Ava Putsova was she ran against him in uh, 20. I believe she ran against him in 20, 2020. And then she was going to run against him again. She did very well. She didn't even have, uh, I believe, very Justice. Well. she didn't even have Justice Democrats backing at that time. But the question is. Why is AOC? Oh, wait, AOC gave money to a candidate that J Justice Democrats are running against? No, I said that I don't think she was actually endorsed by Justice Democrats in that race, but there was the potential for her to be endorsed by them in the next race. She wrote an article in The Intercept. I suggest you read it. It's really interesting. Um, but Sam, the, the question is not about the odds or the likelihood. No one thought AOC was going to be Joe Crowley. She, she had no backing. She had no odds of winning and she still won. Now, imagine if there was that apparatus of AOC and the progressives behind Ava Putsova, who is a convincing candidate, who is respected by many of these progressive institutions, who did write an incredible article in The Intercept about this. Don't you think that there are some more Ava Pitsova's out there who could have challenged D triple C corporate candidates that uh, AOC donated to before primary even took place. I mean, it's possible. It's possible. And that's called softball politics or greasing the wheels as you put it. And that's why I think it's a failed strategy because they are actually hurting themselves, their broader movement of establishing a larger faction. Now, do you still think that they are the vanguard of, of fascism in this country? Because if you if they are actually to help themselves, their strategy, that would be sort of problematic if you think they're fascists, right? I'm not talking about helping themselves. I'm talking about fighting for the agenda that they campaigned on and utilizing the strategy that they said that they were going to carry out via the Justice Democrats faction in Congress, which according to that you know, little discussion we just had about the DCCC donations, they're not doing that. They're choosing to grease the wheels, so to speak. Well, I think they're probably doing both. If they were doing both, don't you think that they would have blocked any number of those policies? No. Why? I, I mean, I don't know what any number of those policies you're talking about, but I don't, but you, you're conflating. Last time I tried to electoral list those policies, politics. you said, Jackson, stop you're, listing policies. You're, you're, you're conflating electoral strategy with legislative strategy. Let, let's just take three in particular. The speakership vote, the Department of State and USAID 12% funding increase, and the Capitol Police vote. Let's just take those three. Those are three examples in which they could have leveraged power. Well, they could have, or they could have just voted against it. 
or they could have just voted against it. Yeah. I mean, there's more that I have here. I have 18 listed. Um, and each they one, may, you know, has- may, like, so for instance, for the speakership, they may have felt like, well, okay, we cannot vote, but ultimately we're going to have to. I mean, you just said yourself, the precedent was that they take 12 votes and that they end up going to land on Pelosi. So if Pelosi knows that, if you're right, and there's no other option as to who's going to be speaker, then what? Well, what if I told you that there potentially could have been other options? You could vote for anyone. They could have voted for Barbara Lee if they wanted to. I mean, Barbara John, Lee didn't John, want, didn't want John, Boehner, John Boehner served uh, speaker 2011 to 2015. He got more you know, Republicans elected since any year since 1928. And he had popular support until the Tea Party came along and they forced him out. He had to retire before he even did another uh, speakership election because he knew he was going to lose. So why could the squad not have done something like that? Who was the other candidate? Barbara Lee didn't want to run. Barbara, anyone could have run. It doesn't matter. Anyone could have run. They didn't. Why didn't they? I, I don't know, but they didn't. There was no other person to vote for. So after 12 votes in your scenario, yes, Nancy Pelosi knows she's going to get elected. No, knows. because because Sam, if you don't think that at a time when 75 percent of Americans wanted Nancy Pelosi to step down as speaker, she has record low approval rating that people are not going to coalesce around a movement to get a new speaker, then you're delusional because that is what would have happened. What? And even if, been the new speaker? even even if. Sam, this was the idea behind force the vote, even if it eventually after 13, 15, 18 rounds ended up with Nancy Pelosi as Speaker of the House. Yeah. Um, they still would have been able to get concessions because of the Why? spectacle they would have drawn by delaying an already unpopular politicians, uh, you know, rise to the speakership position. So there was a movement afoot in the country. Presumably by Democrats to get a different speaker of the house other than Nancy Pelosi. That's what you're telling me. And the spectacle, no, I'm saying created, that you inspire change the spectacle in created would have magically gotten them the ability to get whatever they want. Like the spectacle almost of like forcing the Republicans to filibuster a voting rights act. Uh, no, for- I'm talking about the spectacle of representative Jeanette Rankin starting a house floor vote on women's suffrage in 1918. And because of the mass public appeal that was drawn after the introduction of that vote in the House floor debate, it started within one year. We achieved women's suffrage in this country. That's what I'm talking about. I see. It would have been like women's suffrage to get what? It's the strategy. It's not the fact that you have a major. It was just a coincidence that it was about women getting the right to vote. Had nothing to do with the success of that. Did I? Hey, 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 did I or did I just not list John Boehner and the Tea Party as an example? I don't only cherry pick my examples. I mean, I just listed the Republican Party as a beautiful example of how the strategy could be employed. How 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 the the there was somebody to run against Boehner. It, Sam, the idea is you delay and you potentially find someone to run against Nancy Pelosi. It doesn't matter if there's that someone day, who wants to run. That they day, can, they, Sam, somebody they can vote for anyone. That they're going to vote. Do you understand how a speakership vote works? Yeah, I understand how the speakership vote works, but so you just you told realize me that, that no they could vote any- for anyone, right? Yeah, but so you but, realize that there were Democrats who voted for other Democrats who weren't actively pursuing the speakership. You, are you are you telling me that there was another candidate? Who is that candidate that was going to win? Do you See, understand so that there were Democrats who voted for this? Do so you understand that there were Democrats vote, who voted Nancy for other Pelosi, Democrats? Nancy Pelosi gets the speakership. Damn. But she knows she's going to get the speakership, but that's still going to force a vote because it happened with suffragette, uh, with, with women's right to vote. So why did some, uh, why, if, if you have to have a declared uh, speakership, you know, oh, campaign, Jackson, why did some I, Democrats vote for other, why did some Democrats, I don't why did some Democrats vote for other Democrats who weren't actively pursuing the speakership, if that's the case? They can. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's, that's super interesting because you were saying that there was, they couldn't employ the strategy because there was no one who was actively pursuing. So these six people would have voted for somebody else. You know that there was someone who even voted for, I believe, Tammy Duckworth, who's not even in the house. (laughs) How did she win? Did she? uh, Okay. They could, of course they could vote for somebody else. Oh, oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Because a minute ago, 
You oh, just said, well, who are they going to vote for? There was no one else pursuing all the, the concessions they wanted? You were did just saying happen? no one else was pursuing the speakership. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. I, I, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I mean, you want to keep litigating this force the vote a year later. It was a failed it's strategy. It's not a year later, Sam. There Again, I listed 18 different times throughout just 2021 in which they could have, as you put it, uh, leveraged their power on given votes by blocking the passage of them. Uh, that's force the vote in a nutshell. And you're saying that force the vote was just during the speakership vote. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is honestly like arguing. I don't know what to tell you. You accused me earlier of being the guy who gets too attached to politicians. You are the one who gets too attached to politicians and refuses to criticize them where it matters most. Sure, you'll occasionally talk poorly when they make an abhorrent vote, but you will not criticize them on their overall strategy, which is pursuing a, a you know, greasing of the wheels rather than playing hardball politics and leveraging their power. I, I, I just don't make the assessment of their power like you do. It's not making an assessment. It's looking at how closely these votes pass and knowing that they had enough people to block their passage. Well, in, in some instances, maybe they didn't want to uh, block their passage. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, then uh, what's the point of the Justice Democrats if they are not going to? And it's not necessarily about well, blocking. You know it's what they're saying. They're, they're more progressive. What is the point about the Justice they're Democrats if they're not doing You've what they set out to do? They're more they're the most progressive members of Congress. Is that the bar you want to set them to? That's the bar you want to judge them upon. Yeah. I think that's I mean, what, what about when uh, the squad was not in Congress? Did you actively support Nancy Pelosi because she was one of the most progressive in Congress? I supported Bernie Sanders. Um, I what about the House. I'm talking I, I, about the House. We're okay. talking about the house. the house. I mean, I didn't perceive Nancy Pelosi as the most progressive uh, member. I at one point, I thought she was the best when uh, when Donald Trump came to office. I figured she might be the best person to uh, to be the in the leadership while they're in the minority. But um, I, subsequent to that, I felt like I would rather have someone who was not even progressive be in the leadership of the House. I mean, and, and I think to a certain extent, if you, I know you watched the, the Ilhan Omar interview, you didn't quite fully understand the leadership uh, conversation. But I think that she was implying that you don't it really the leadership uh, position should not necessarily be about whether they're progressive or not. I think it's really more about the amount of power that you can amass amongst the, the caucus. So, Sam, and six when you people, talk about when you talk uh, about power in the caucus, or sophomore members of Congress, six members of, of Congress just don't have that kind of power. So when you talk they, about they, the freedom they, caucus, they do have that type of power. Well, getting rid of Boehner, you're talking they about do have that type of power, Sam, who were secret, who were secret members of this caucus. And we, we just don't have that kind of power yet. In, First of all, the, the Republican majority at the time was much bigger than what we see today. And the squad has multiple, multiple opportunities, 18, again, that I've listed, uh, in which there was must-pass bills or near-must-pass bills in which the vote was so slim. What is that a must-pass bill in your estimation? A must-pass bill is something that either must pass to continue with the session of Congress, such as a adoption of house rules, speakership, house vote, or the near must pass bills that I was referring to are things that are a top priority of the Biden administration to pass to solidify his legacy. I mean, the the must pass bills would be something like a debt ceiling or something to that. Sure. Um, Avoiding government shutdowns. Yeah. Yeah. There's been there's been probably, I'd say, six or seven of those. OK, now, uh, and, and your argument is that if they inhibited the passage of this bill, they'd be able to get stuff each time. The Democrats would reward that. The Democrats uh, would reward yes, that's how politics works in Congress. This is what Republicans right. and Democrats have done for years. This is how it works. Within, so in other words, like um, when, um, I don't know, like, like Lynn Cheney, for instance. Liz. Uh, Liz Cheney, sorry. Like uh, when she bucks them and uh, they reward her, is that it? She gets she gets stuff from the the Republican Party. I think it's a little bit of a different makeup with Liz Cheney and the Republican Party. 
I'm just we're, we're, um, you're, 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 you're telling us exactly well, how you're speaking. You're speaking vaguely. You're speaking vaguely. I'm talking about specific votes that they could have blocked. You're speaking about bucking the GOP establishment on maybe a talking point or I don't maybe impeachment. Are you referring to? I don't know. I don't know what you're referring to. Yeah. Impeachment. January 6th commission. Well, the difference is Liz Cheney doesn't. Uh, in some cases, she has been able to whip even Democrats to block you know, some of uh, the MAGA agenda, such as when Trump wanted to remove uh, troops from he wanted to do a partial removal of troops from Germany and Afghanistan. She whipped together even one of my own former uh, Congress people, Mike Levin from California's 49th district to vote in unison with uh, a plurality, I guess, of Republicans on that measure to block Trump. And it succeeded. But the the difference between Liz Cheney and the squad is or the Justice Democrats, whatever, is that the Justice Democrats have a set ideology. They campaign to form a faction and essentially leverage their power to carry out you know, their agenda or to get concessions that flow in line with their agenda. So my problem is they are not doing this. And the votes that they are passing are votes that I, you know, entirely disagree with, such as those sanctions I mentioned, uh, okay. such as capital police funding, um, the Israel Iron, is, the Israel Iron Dome vote. Yeah, no, Israel Iron Dome vote is not one of those because that passed by such overwhelming uh, margins, you know? And so and you wanted to debate me on this because you want me to have the same agenda that you have. No, I want you to hold the uh, squad to what they said they were going to do and what they said they were going to fight for. I am curious, like, what is your uh, what is your preferred method of holding the squad accountable uh, when they continue to not fight for their agenda by pursuing the strategy of leveraging their power? If it makes sense to primary them, I would primary them. But I don't think it's worth the deployment of resources personally to primary the most progressive members of Congress. OK, so at what point do you maybe begin to think that instead of continuing to operate within the confines of the Democratic Party and primarying more people and ending up this with the is, same results, this is need something else. What we should have had a debate about, Jackson. And I was trying to get to, because really, if you think that the progressive Democrats in Congress are the uh, the vanguard of fascism, if you think that they are worthless. Uh, then you think the entire Democratic Party is worthless. And what you're really coming on to argue is that we should be supporting a third party. No, and what I came I on to argue, I what don't I came on to care. argue, say, I I, what I, I came don't on to argue is the fact the that the only time, the only time that you I defend the squad nowadays is, is when you make videos about Jimmy Dore. And you know that, that those are the only videos that get you views. So, I'm sorry. You make these videos about Jimmy Dore at times attacking the squad and stuff in the squad. And then the only reason why you do this, though, I think is because you want to do a hit piece on Jimmy Dore. And even though okay. your channel has over a million so subscribers, me, your only videos that get views are ones about Jimmy Dore and when you defend the squad and so on and so forth. Okay. You seem very so invested in, other in words, YouTube, dude. In other words, <laughs> you wanted to come on and debate about... Sam holds a, hold, Sam holds a major um, stake in my, YouTube, as do, as do the Young Turks. That's why I am invested. Yeah. Well, I don't get views. I, I mean, so I don't know why yeah, you say well, I have a, a stake. You get in a lot of views. I just said, though, you get a lot of views on the videos in which you go after Jimmy Dore for criticizing the squad. Well, we should probably do more uh, Jimmy Dore videos. But um, <laughs> but but that aside, is that what you want to come it. on to debate that you don't like the idea that I'm doing Jimmy Dore videos? Sam, I don't know how many times I have to say what I came on to debate. You refuse to actually hold the squad accountable. And you said maybe at one point, you know, I am going to support primarying them, but I don't think that's the best, you know, way to leverage our power and resources. But I guess I would just pose the question because, you know, I don't support primarying the squad. I don't support primarying Democrats right now um, because what? I think that. <laughs> Why? Because I think that the Justice Democrats are a failed strategy and they're choosing to play party politics and pass the DNC's agenda. Also, you just think that we should we should vote for third party candidates. 
I think that there's other avenues we need to look into. But what I think we all need to come. Well, what to are those point. other avenues? Why? I mean, this is, Sam, this is Sam, important Sam, about this conversation. Sam, Sam, what I think we all need to come into agreement upon is that the Justice Democrats, their strategy has failed and the squad is now towing the line of the DNC. That's something that you still refuse to yeah. acknowledge or address. I, or disagree. even attempt to hold them accountable upon. I disagree. You've already stated that you consider them more progressive than the Gottheimers and the mansions of the party. I disagree with you. You just said that you will occasionally call them out for some of the bad votes they take. There were some that I mentioned that you did not call them out over, which is OK. I don't expect you to follow like every single detail of, you know, congressional votes. But uh, at the end of the day, you are not criticizing them for failing upon their overall strategy of forming a faction that can leverage their power in Congress. And you are instead giving them some at least tepid support for greasing the wheels and giving one hundred and sixty thousand dollars to DCCC Democrats. Correct. So that's why I guess you and I just disagree. Yeah. Let's talk about the People's Party. Would and, you support? Would you support AOC giving more money to uh, D Triple C Democrats, even though she said she wasn't going to do that? If she made an assessment that there was a strategic value for it, um, I, I, I would, I, I would be okay with it. Even if there's more opportunities to leverage their power on must pass or near must pass bills. I, I don't agree with your premise that. What don't you agree about it? Because do you agree that they don't have the number of votes over again, uh, over and over again? I don't no, think you, you haven't you, outlined it yet. is effective. You, not you, you, you don't think that they have enough votes or what? I just don't think it's going to go down the way you think it's going to go down, Jackson. What do you mean by that? I don't think your idea of how Congress works is how Congress works. It is how it's worked in the past. I mean, this is how I know works. the suffragettes. Yes, I understand. No, no, I wasn't going to bring example. that up. I was going to bring Boehner up. But the idea is that if they dude, maybe dude, this has never I, happened before this, in Congress, this, maybe. This, hey, Sam, maybe this has never Jackson, happened before Jackson, in Congress. Jackson, Jackson, Don't Jackson. you think that they should at least try? Jackson, because this when was their you strategy. Were in junior high. I don't want to I talk about covering this every is very, day. This is, John this is, very, this is very weird. I can tell you. This is very weird. I don't want to. What are you no, doing talking about you junior high? I'm I talking about the fact that you change subjects. There was not changing four subjects. members. There was not changing four subjects. sophomore members of Congress who eliminated John Boehner. You are okay? changing subjects. No, no. You brought up John Boehner. <laughs> you brought up John Boehner. And then I you went to this weird analogy about my middle school. Or it's not an analogy. What I'm talking about That's is the fact that. That's not what an analogy is. You, okay, so you still have not outlined this. I was you, saying you that still I have not said very carefully what happened to John Boehner, and in, none of it went down the way you say it did. Okay, first of all, that's incorrect. But second of all, you did not acknowledge what I initially questioned to you. Which was what? I mean, maybe if you'd listened, you'd heard me. What I said I was that. that the squad could have blocked the passage of these bills you have not contested that they didn't have enough votes to block well, or delay voted against it yes block or delayed okay so you're saying they no, could have no. done this. they could have voted against it they could have blocked or delayed it yes so why do you think that that would have failed even if it's never happened before they could have they could have voted against it and, and and if they had enough votes to kill the bill they could have killed the bill or they could have delayed it and renegotiated what do you mean delayed it they could have told Nancy Pelosi that we are not going to vote for this unless you give us substantive concessions. They could have gone out on CNN and MSNBC on Mehdi Hassan show and say, I'm not prepared to vote for this bill until we get these concessions that we have listed. Don't you think that that is an effective strategy? And don't you think that's also the strategy that the I Justice that, Democrats initially that, ran on? I think I think that could work uh, on on occasion. But I think that Nancy Pelosi, OK, for the most part, is beloved by Democratic voters for better, or for worse. That, I would have that's incorrect. Not She's got a very, very low approval rating. But if not true with Democratic primary voters, Google dude. this up. Let's put it, it up. In, Sam, put it, Sam so you let's, just you just acknowledge fact check for you, Jackson. I just said she low approval rating. Did you no, not hear what Democratic I just said? Democratic primary voters. Yeah. Go, put I'm talking about Democratic the whole voters. of this country. But well, Sam, you, you just said, Sam, I don't want to let you off on this. I don't want to let you off on this. <laughs> you just said, Bradley, will you look that up and put it up? Look on it up. I, I could not. You know, I don't care. So you just said that on occasion, you could see how leveraging their power by either withholding their votes for a given policy could work. 
So why are you not criticizing the squad when they choose not to do this? I don't think that they should do it randomly. I don't you know. Just, I didn't say it. randomly. I just said they could do it. And you just said that. Jackson, there is a th- there was a three point five trillion dollar bill that was passed in the House that included some of the key priorities that these lawmakers wanted. And you're suggesting they're not leveraging their vote because because it didn't pass in the Senate. No, I'm saying because they are voting for bills that did pass in the House and in the Senate and were signed into law. And they are not withholding their support for those bills like Capitol Police funding, like State Department oh funding, ah, like dude, uh, the dude, House Speaker. What vote. is the value of them voting against Capitol Police funding relative you just said it. to getting you just said it. pre-K for people? You just said it. You just said. They got the, value, the pre-K. You just said got- that the. Sam, you just said that the value in it. This is your words that the value in it is that, yes, I could see that sometimes working. You said that. Brad, uh, listen, Jackson. How many times do you want to change the subject before Jackson, you finally address that? You're subject. not holding You're them saying accountable. You, Sam, want them you are not holding them accountable. To get stuff that they want, and they got it. In the you just said that, that they could do that, though. I, yes, I agree that there is a, such a thing as leverage and, and that it can be used. used and I'm suggesting they've done it. <laughs> I'm suggesting to you that they haven't done it because they okay. haven't withheld their votes. You're saying that the Build Back Better agenda is. How do you there know they didn't agenda? withhold their votes? Build Back Better agenda is Biden's said, agenda. I owe you That's not even their agenda. How do you know they didn't withhold their votes and Nancy Pelosi didn't go to him and say, I owe you one? And that's why they're not going harder at him like you suggested up top. I don't think that they're doing that because if they were doing that, if they were going to be withholding their support, they would do what Cory Bush and Jamal Bowman did before the speakership vote. Do you remember what they did? They went out on, uh, uh, was it Dana Bash's show or something like that? They went out on some corporate news show and they said that we are not going to guarantee a vote for Nancy Pelosi. Why are you putting an accent on there? Oh, because it's uh, Bowman. All right. I'm putting an accent on there. What the hell is this? We are not we are not going to be voting for Nancy Pelosi guaranteed unless we get substantive things in return. And they listed two things. I think I think they listed reparations and they listed uh, they listed one other policy. At the end of the day, they did not coalesce and try to make these things happen. But that is what you need to do if you have big asks or you have, you know, concessions that you want. You need to be willing to make a public cry. Uh, to the people to support out. you in your effort. You've the also acknowledged that AOC has some of the most power in Congress. She's got the most fundraising. She's got the most uh, in- Instagram, Twitter followers. She got the most um, Twitter followers. Okay. She, so she should use that to her leverage when she makes these public cries for support when she is going to be withholding her her support for these bills. Okay. What do you mean? OK, what is this? OK, you have one of the largest news shows on YouTube for for leftist politics and you refuse to criticize them. You just say, OK, you say, I don't care. What is this? Do you not have any values that you stand upon? No. <laughs> I don't. Are we done? Let's be done. Seventy-five percent Democrats support Nancy Pelosi. I'll have a lot of value in the primary. I'm not. I'm not Maybe terribly happy one. about that. Um, Maybe we can hear more about the People's Party next. But to be fair, that was two days ago, so that could have changed. That's pretty much straight. Maybe line. once they hear about force the vote, it'll dip. Um, I mean, I think to a certain extent, like there is. Did a, I say that she oh, has? Uh, she I, has thought, I, thought, I thought you hung up in, in this oh, in the Democratic geez. Party. Did I say that? I don't know. Are you putting words in my mouth? Honestly, I I, I stopped listening to you some time ago, to be honest with you. But I appreciate it. Hey, Sam, last words here. Last words here. Sure. Maybe listening to the people who used to be your viewers and used to be your fans like me should be something that you do in the future. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate the conversation. You're still and, a viewer, uh, Jackson. I'm, as far I'm as sure I this, what's You're that? Still, not only are you still a viewer, but you actually show it to the, the, the people who watch your show. 
So I I'm not a fan of you anymore, though. That's the difference. Oh, no, no, oh I, Jesus, I'm my heart. Sorry about that. <laughs> His heart's broken. <laughs> That's just from uh, what the week. Thank you, though. I appreciate you coming on, Jackson. I'm sorry. Right. You know, I'm I'll see you guys. Accountable. Yeah. <laughs> you never responded to the fascism thing. Never ever. Or the fact that he thought that there's no the leadership. leadership vote. Yeah, that's mm. true. Well, I think we learned something. I'm going to turn Force my the vote equals leverage. When was it fan of mine? Back Matt, was... why are you muting me? I can need to turn my camera back on. Oh, God. I'm you? sorry, people. I know. I know. I am very sorry about that. I got to... People are a little mad. Um, <laughs> uh... <laughs> Let's go, Jackson, says John Mc, uh, Mc, <laughs> McDropper. Wait, I can't turn my video on. Microphone specialist, longtime Majority Report member here. I am laughing very hard. Poor Jackson. Awesome possum. That was exhausting. Um, John, uh, let's see. Matt. Jen Hexer, please be fucking done. Uh, <laughs> I apologize, folks. I couldn't help it.